Hello, this is Miles McGeehan. Today I want to demonstrate how to use badges or achievements within course sites to allow small awards to be given periodically throughout your course to the students. I'm in a content area here and I've got a variety of different uh, activities, assignments, quizzes, discussion posts, um, etc. Next I'm going to select the tools category and choose achievements aka badges. First, give the um, achievement a name. Next, identify where you want this achievement located. I was in a specific content area called Session 1. If I want to change this, I can browse and put it in a different unit or folder uh, within my content area. Select the achievement type. and then um, make this visible to students before they receive it? Yes or no? Um, by making it visible, uh, they, students would be able to go to their achievements area and identify, um, they would see all the badges that they could be awarded in the course, but they are grayed out uh, in a light gray tone. When the student receives the badge, then it becomes colorful as a certificate of completion. So yeah, I wanna go ahead and uh, allow this to be visible. I can give a basic description for this achievement Next, I'm going to define triggers. A trigger is a criteria that must be met for um, the badge or achievement to be awarded. So uh, each of these different criteria would be given a rule or a rule name. I can have more than one rule. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, toggle a few of these features. I can give the badge to specific uh, users or groups. Um, or I can select appropriate grades for certain assignments to be completed and they have to score above a certain uh, percentage or point value to be able to receive the award. So let's imagine I want to do um, an assignment that's within this unit and um, I can either select a condition like they should at least have attempted this assignment or I can give a particular score. They need to be greater than or equal to, etc. cetera. Uh, I'll choose percent and maybe I could ind indicate 80% is my cutoff criteria. I can add more than one rule. I can repeat this uh, and create a, another grade column requirement. This time I'm gonna select a discussion post and uh, maybe I'll just uh, want them to have at least attempted the discussion and I'll add that item to this rule. Another area of particular interest is the review status criteria. I'm gonna go ahead and jump back to uh, my course content area and model what this looks like. After I've created an item, a quiz, a discussion post, uh, an assessment, an, um, a file, etc. Uh, I can go back and add the review status enabling by using the drop down caret and choose review status. By changing this to enabled, what it will do is it will allow the student to see a little checkbox at the bottom of the content item. I'm going to model that, what that will look like for a student's view by selecting a different browser and showing you uh, the student's view of a course. I'm logged in now as a student. This little check bark box marked review is only visible on the student screen. The instructors never get to see this. All the instructor would see is this little enabled review uh, and they would know that it is uh, a possibility for the students to check this when completed. If I enable the review status, I can actually use it as uh, part of my criteria for receiving a badge. So I can browse and add particular items that students need to review before the badge is awarded.
You know, this is a bit of a tough screen to see based on the color scheme that I've um, selected for this particular course. But if you look closely, I see my session one folder, content folder, and all the items within it. I wanted the students to look at this online blended and hybrid research module. There's a bunch of just content files for them to read through. And I'm going to add that as um, a criteria. To review, this particular rule requires that students have completed two of the graded items. One was the scavenger hunt and they needed to receive a percent greater than 80 to be approved. They also needed to complete a discussion post and had made at least one attempt in the discussion area. And as well, students would have had to have reviewed just simply by checking the, mark, the box marked for review, demonstrating that they, um, on the honor system, that they opened that up and looked at that content. These are the three criteria that must be met before the badge will be issued. Next, I'm going to select a reward. Here, I can choose a different type of icon, or if I have a particular icon that I want to use for my reward, I can browse my computer and attach uh, an image directly. And then if I want, I can publish this to Mozilla. So what does this mean? Well, Mozilla is the same company that made Firefox. They've created a kind of like a digital briefcase area uh, that you can uh, collect different badges for. And it's used in the business world to demonstrate things that uh, might not necessarily be highlighted in a resume. So uh, items such as a MOOC or um, online course uh, recertification processes that you don't necessarily receive any um, degree work for but it would help you become more expert like in your technical field so there are um, if you go and you google Mozilla's badges you'll learn more about it and I could actually publish badges awarded within my course out to uh, the students digital briefcase if I see so fit uh, and I can toggle those features here Finally, I'll choose save and exit and the badge will be created. I'm automatically taken to the achievements button as the instructor and I can see where all the other badges I've created in the course are. Here's that new badge that I created. Uh, in the instructor's view, I also see any students that were recipients of that badge. So that gives me a numeric item next to it to show me how many people have already been awarded these badges and if I click that, it's hyperlinked you can uh, actually go and see those eight recipients and so forth. I can hover over this and choose to edit the criteria for a badge if I um, need to as the instructor. And then if I go back to my content area and go back to that first unit, I'll see the badge at the bottom. I'm still in the instructor mode here, so I will be able to see the, the badge, but it will be invisible to students in this particular area until they've been um, awarded this badge. So here's that new badge I created. I see it, but the students won't until they've fulfilled the adaptive release or the criteria for success. Finally, let's take a look at what it looks like for the students. I'm logged in as a student now, and um, when a student is in the session, they do not see the badge at the bottom until it's awarded. Once they've completed the proper criteria in here successfully, then they'll see that badge become awarded. Students can also, um, if a teacher sees fit, a teacher can add a button that goes to the badge area or the achievement area. I've added that link on the left hand side here on my menu bar. The student selects that and they would see all of the different badges that they could earn However, they are light, um, a lighter color. Once the badge is awarded, it will become a dark, bolder color. So, um, students could toggle between all or the ones that are unearned or the ones that, they've, um, that they have earned. Notice that this student example hasn't earned any badges yet, so this area remains blank. Well, that wraps it up. I hope that uh, you found this instructional video about how badges function within Core Sites to be useful. There's a lot of value to adding badges. It can um, really offer a nice intrinsic reward system for students. Uh, it allows 
students to recognize when they've completed everything properly and when they can move on in a particular area of a course and so forth. Uh, it's definitely worth exploring. It's uh, pretty easy to set up. And, um, well, I hope you enjoy it and uh, get some great use from it. Thanks, and until next time, have a great day.